to worship. Visitors are asked to sign the guest book in the parlor or fill out a card in the pew and place it in the offering plate. The Valley Food Pantry is requesting all varieties of canned vegetables. Please place your donations in the cart in the vestibule. Casting our nets will meet Tuesday at 7 p.m. Please note the date change. 
<clears throat> Please remember to return your completed volunteer forms in as soon as possible. Uh, one was included in the September newsletter, and there are more forms in the basket in the back of the church. Return your forms into those baskets, please. Preparations are underway for the Apple Festival on October 19th. Sign-up sheets are on the table in the parlor for help the days prior to, the day of, uh, for the baked sale and apple pies. Please sign up where you can help. Also, items are needed for the cancer awareness tricky tray. If you wish to donate items, please place them in the pink box in the parlor by next Sunday. Items for the Trash to Treasure Flea Market may be brought to the church weekday mornings from 9 to, uh, throughout the afternoon. Use the double doors at the back of the church and please put all donations in or close to the youth room. We are in need of Sunday school teachers for pre-K through second grade and fifth and sixth grade. All material is provided. A sign-up sheet's on the table in the parlor with the open dates. Please prayerfully consider helping us in this important ministry. The Christian Education Coordinator position is open and much needed. You can get a job description from the church office. It's a paid position of an average of 10 hours per week, and you may work as a team with someone. Please see Pastor Cindy or Cindy Durr for more information. The October 5th, 4.30 p.m. evening worship service here will include blessing of the animals, uh, pets and their people. The service will be held in the outdoor worship space unless weather forces us into the Roth Hall. Bring your pets to worship for a special blessing, and the service will include a time for lighting candles in memory and gratitude of our beloved pets. And if you can't bring in your pet for some reason, you can bring in an item of your, you know, their collar or one of their favorite toys, and we can still bless that. Also, our noisy offering for the last two weeks uh, collected $484 and some odd cents, and our Sunday school this morning went, and at the local market, we bought the food that's up here. We spent a little under $400, $390 were spent, and we had about a dozen kids and teachers and parents go with. It was kind of, we, we created quite a spectacle at the, at the Valley West Market. Uh, we asked one of the cashiers if we could do anything to help. Somebody asked her and she said, no, I'm just loving it. So <laughs> anyway, are there any other announcements or prayer requests? Yeah, thank you to whoever's taking care of the church geraniums, because they do look amazing. Been a good year for geraniums, but somebody has been taking good care of them with the dry weather. Any other announcements or prayer requests? If not, let's stand for our gathering hymn.
our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing.
Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading the psalm. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who my render, render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot attain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrong, wrongly. And in order to spend what you get on your pleasures, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. 
He did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest? Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. If there's any children here today, come on up, please. talking to the disciples about what's going to happen to them, and it's not very good. But the disciples never asked him any questions about it. So what I want each one of you to understand is, and God would say, never be afraid to ask a question. Never be afraid to ask questions respectfully and thoughtfully. Because when we do, we can understand more clearly what God might want of us, or our parents might want of us, or our teachers might want of us. As long as you raise your hand and ask a question, it's a very good thing. Okay, and I'll talk more about that in the sermon today, with what the disciples didn't do. Okay? Let us pray. Loving God, look after your children, and especially give them courage to ask questions when they have them in a respectful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead. May go back to where we were. Lessons on this day. And now he's feeling extra special because he's got a good kiss. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth help each one of us to love broader, wider, and deeper. In Jesus' name, amen. It would be very easy to read through this entire scripture and not realize something that is really important, I believe. If you had a best friend come to you and say, I'm going to be betrayed into human hands and I will be killed. I will rise again. And guess who doesn't say a word after this news? Twelve guys who are more concerned with who's the greatest. That's who. Can you imagine how differently things might have turned out How had they have said to Jesus, Lord, can you explain this more to us? How can we help? And how is this going to turn out? What's going to happen? I think each one of them would have had a more intimate understanding. Because remember, he told them before one other time that this was going to happen. They didn't want to hear him then either. 
Talk about denial. How often are we in the spot as the disciples were? It's so human to not want to ask questions that we don't want to know the answers to. I'll give you an example. Oftentimes I will go to someone's home, and this is before I was a pastor, even as a social worker, and I would ask children whose parents had died, what were your parents' wishes when they died? And 50% would say, I have no idea. How sad. I know that these are hard things to ask people. I really do. However, don't we always want to have the very best for people when they go to God? Always. And how can you when you have no idea what somebody might want? These are things that we ask God for bravery and courage to put that question forward. So that when it's time to have a person go back home to God, we're doing exactly what their wishes are, and we don't have to play this guessing game. Another example, for any of us who know teachers, who are teachers, who have experienced things with teachers who are magnificent in every way but human, and I'll give you an example. When I was in seminary, I had listened to like a two and a half hour lecture. I cannot sit still for that long, just so you know. Not my gift. You did get a bathroom break, but that wasn't long enough. And after this long lecture, after class, and there was plenty of time after class before the next class, and I said to her, could you please explain this concept to me again? And guess what that wonderful, highly regarded doctor of theology professor said to me? I said it once, that's enough. What did that teach me? Well, number one, I'm thinking in my head, well, if she thinks I'm not going to ask any more questions, she's got another thing coming. <laughs> that's my mom. <laughs> but I knew, oh, really holy people can be rotten too. Make mistakes not be kind, not be gentle, not be instructive, and everyone has a bad day, right? With teachers, many times my experience has been that out of necessity, we look and we think, okay, this child is kind of like this, this child is kind of like this, this child is kind of like this. But oftentimes, a teacher might say to a parent, well, your child seems a little maladjusted because they don't talk to anyone, they don't mingle well, etc., etc." The hope is that with God's help, a parent can say, hmm, why do you think that is? Because at home, my child isn't like that at all rather than sitting there voiceless thinking, well, that's the authority they know. Guess what? We are the ones that live at home with our children, not teachers. And just like my professor in seminary, sometimes they can be wrong. During this election year, it's really important, regardless of political party, that each of us be asking questions of every candidate that is out there. Because if we love Jesus, we're looking at who is looking after the vulnerable. Because this is what Jesus is talking about, being like a child. The reason he took that child in his arms was to say, this is the most vulnerable of all. And this is how our hearts need to be for one another. Not these preconceived notions, this unconditional love of children for people they know that love them. Very, very important. 
That's why he uses a child as an example. Not because children are anything extremely more important than anyone else to Jesus, but because they are so vulnerable, this is who he looks after, especially well. And that's why we here feed the hungry. Because when you are food compromised, you cannot think well, you cannot sleep well, you cannot have an abundance of life if you do not have nutrition in your life, physically. For all of us, it is very important that we are brave enough to ask these really difficult questions of each other and of our government. Because if we don't ask those questions, we're going to have people telling us exactly what we should do, when we should do them, and how. And as children of our Lord, God is our master in every way, shape, and form, regardless of political party at all. Let us ask these important questions so that we can faithfully come to conclusions that bring abundance and clarity to this God's world. Let us not be like the disciples and say, uh, let's talk about something else. Because that's kind of how we are as human beings. Let us be as God made us, brave and courageous, on this and every God's day. Amen.
the Apostles' Creed. I think he's God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God and his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose to heaven. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the Church, God's good creation and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries of hospitality and faith formation. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us towards more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations. Heal divisions in our country and local communities that together we might cooperate for the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Faithful God, you draw near to you all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer. Especially we pray for those on our prayer list and others we hold in our hearts. Transform economic political and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. All merciful and all suffering Lord, we ask you to bless this food that our Sunday school purchased and bless all the families of the Valley Food Pantry who will receive it. Your mercy is, uh, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Transforming God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God. You embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died. Console those who mourn. And at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God. In the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Everyone at home and everyone here, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace.
In thanksgiving for our offerings, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God.
one here and at home if you prefer to receive in the pew and we not come out to you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.